Is this familiar to anybody? Yes. Can't see. So we can keep we can keep marking the dark. <laughs> I've got plenty of light to see. Yep. So does that look familiar to anybody? Citizen Kane. So here's a story about a man who had everything. He had power. He had control. He had money. He had women. He had people at his beck and call. Most people would think that he was the most free person that they could possibly meet. But instead, if you looked at this movie, that this guy spent his entire life attaining all these different things, because it's what he thought he needed on the inside to make himself something. And at the very end of the movie, that's the scene you see. And that was his childhood sled. That's all he wanted. That's all he really wanted to be free. And in our innocence, we have the most high conscience we can possibly imagine. And as we move on in life, we start to get into our subconscious, we start to get into our lower consciousness, we start to just react in a fight or flight mechanism. May I have the next slide, please? This is progression of consciousness. In, I've got my own notes, so I could not always look behind me. So, you've got the organism and the method of protecting the enhancing organism. Now, this is a book called Handbook to Higher Consciousness by Ken and Penny Keys. Ken Keys Jr. and Penny Keys. And this is some of his curriculum, some of his thoughts, some of his ways of teaching how to achieve that higher consciousness. But first, we've got to know how we are in our consciousness. So, the organism being the animal, the method of protecting or enhancing this particular organism will be relatively fixed lifestyle based on instinct or unlearned program behavior. That is what we all call our animal instinct. We're very familiar with this. Lower conscious human is an ego-directed sub-object, emotion-backed security sensation and power consciousness increasingly involving the rational mind that makes us inflexible, guard and protect habitual folkways and personal patterns. Let me switch back to my notes for a minute. In the higher consciousness human, the ego-driven negative emotions have been replaced by wide-ranging insight and deep intuitive understanding, giving full flexibility to flow in mutually supportive and loving ways with no inflexible folkways and personal patterns. When we want to discuss folkways, it's a key word here. Does anybody really understand the definition off the top of your head? Because it's something that, you know, I love words as the writer. Yeah, I love words. I, I make love to words. But I had to look this up because I had a, a, a basic understanding. When I looked up, the definition is folkways are the ways of living, thinking, and acting in a human group built up without conscious design but serving as a compelling guide of contact. Conduct, excuse me. This is a major part of the programming in your buyer computer, as Ken Keys will constantly be referring to it. I'm going to be presenting some of the information in this book. This book gets heady in some parts of it. I invite every single person to read this book because I read this thing 20 years ago, and for me, this is a back to basics and reminding myself of where I've slipped and where I may slip in my mind sometimes. If I may have the next slide. The law of higher consciousness, love everyone unconditionally, including yourself. This is the living love philosophy. This is living unconditionally. This means there's no bartering, no dominating in any way, no control or manipulation of others through your emotions or your reaction to their emotions to fulfill your animal instinct to survive. Just got to breathe into this for a moment. When we are living unconditionally and truly love each other unconditionally, half of the woes that we find in our mind will be gone. Because Armand and Angelina were here last week and I like the way they said it, you're making it up. Half the stuff that goes on in our mind, we're making it up. And when we live unconditionally and realize that certain things are being triggered within that emotional response system that 
we can have a different choice. Now, some of you guys know what I walked through last year. Some of you don't. It's all good. But one of the things that happened in all the different things I went through is it put me in a fight or flight mechanism again. It put me back in that survival mode, which makes sense. I faced my death. So when you're doing things like that, we have to be able to remember to bring ourselves back out of it, back out of that animal instinct reaction to fight or flight, survival mode. So no more of this, I will love you if you meet my emotional back security center. This keeps us in our lower vibration. We do it all the time, we've, been, we've learned these behaviors, they're programmed behaviors, they're programmed emotional response behaviors from all the one when we were tots. And later on in this series, we'll get to a place uh, of living love with children, because that's covered in, in later chapters. But we also have to realize from the onset of our own lives, we've been being programmed. And I've talked about this in different ways, many throughout the last 25 years of my life, how we've all been being programmed that this is a computer. He calls it your buyer computer. He's going to get into some headier stuff later on in the book, which is why I invite people to read it, because he, he starts to talk about some brain functions. And there's also been a lot of research since the 20 years he wrote this book, or him and his wife wrote this book. That left brain, right brain thing has already been being put to the wayside as more myth than science. There's aspects of our left and right hemispheres, but creativity and, and logic, that, that part is more myth than real science. Higher consciousness is how we're reacting, and lower consciousness is how we're reacting to the stimuli around us. When we started off in life, we started in jungles and started in fight or flight mechanisms. We had to rely on those base instincts to keep us on the planet. Now we're in a different world. Now we're in a world where we have to rely on getting along with people, communing with each other, realizing that we're all one, and we'll get into that in a little bit. These are the ways to lift that consciousness, and this is why the, per, per, the back, you don't have to go back on the, on the slide, but the progressive of consciousness, what it's trying to represent. And I actually have a bunch of these I'm going to pass out, and if Becky could just, just while I'm talking, pass one to everybody. Uh, this gives you guys charts or things just to look at, keep around, and, and be mindful of, well, what's going on in your world and what stage of consciousness you're in. So, the ne uh, can I have the next page, please? Blah, blah, blah. Law of higher consciousness suggests a practical guide for an Aquarian age. You add suffering to the world just as much when you take offense as when you give offense. Just breathe that in. I've been, this has been like a mantra for me, and so many times I hear my higher self going, Mark, you're taking offense. A lot of what, again, I, I shared with people, and <clears throat> I am always sharing with people. I share to a fault, and when you see the 12 pathways, you're going to see one of the things in them, and I'm getting ahead of myself, where basically it says share to a fault, because we're all one. If I keep a secret from you, I'm keeping your own secret from you. It's not my secret. But anyway, go on a rant there. This, this keeps us in lower vibrations when we do this. And, and the story would be, when emotions are triggered to a security addiction, we act out our unfulfilled addiction with anger, anxiety, stress, control, manipulation. And here's how it works in everyday life. So you're at work. The boss gives you a ration of crap for not doing it the way he, want, he or she wanted it done. You get all flustered inside. You get fl mad. You got challenged. Somebody's trying to control you and making you do something the different way. And then you go home flustered. He goes home, yells at his wife. His wife yells at the kid, and the kid goes and kicks the cat. Everything has a ripple effect. May I have the next page, please? We have seven and a half billion opportunities to live love. Every pe person that you meet is an opportunity to live love and raise your own consciousness. See, in the living love way, the guy realizes where his boss was coming from. He breathes into what center it triggers in him and loves the guy unconditionally. He goes home, shares the experience with his wife, she admires her husband's good heart, goes and compliments her kid for being such a help lately, and the kid goes and gives the cat milk without being asked. Everything has a ripple effect. When I can love unconditionally in the moment, even with that guy or girl coming at me, 
in their control and their power centers. I walk through this, guys. I mean, I'm willing to own every single thing that I've walked through in my life as an example. It's like I was working for somebody that was being ridiculously controlling and I had to walk away from it. But once I walked away from it, I still had to go inside and go, what patterns in me were creating this? It's still the universe talking at me, berating my whole life or with control and power. If that's going on in your life, it's your life. It's your consciousness creating this. When we're creating our reality, we're creating 100% all the time, no matter what. What this is designed to do is help us raise our consciousness so that we can create what we want, but also understanding our addictions, which is going to lead me right to the next page. In the living love system, an addiction is any desire that makes you unhappy or upset if it's not satisfied. It is a programming or operating instruction to your buyer computer that triggers emotional responses and excites your lower consciousness if the world does not fit the programmed pattern in your mind. So how is everybody's drive here today? This is, this is a good barometer for you and for the people around you. Because I was in a loving place and I know where I'm at and I, I still had to deal with the triggers along the way. Because I like my song of boneheads on the highway make me unhappy. <laughs> and when I can sing it and be playful with it, I don't get plugged in. But there's many times I've gotten plugged in and now I'm remembering, Mark, you're getting plugged into lower consciousness. When people are in traffic and now, now take Titusville and Coco and these little, little areas of Brevard and go into a metro area like Chicago, New York, California, or LA, Orlando now, that's, that's, Orlando is training camp for Manhattan, Chicago, and LA, just so you know. <laughs> because if you go up there and drive, you have to get into a completely different mindset. You have to like, la la la, I'm driving to Florida. It's like, no, now you're in Queens, you're in Manhattan, you're in the Bronx. You're, you're, you're the entity you thought you were is not you anymore. <laughs> and that's how everybody else is driving too. So everybody is running around in the jungle on a fight or flight mechanism and that's what happens when we're in traffic. People forget that this vehicle around them <clears throat> is a big 2,000 pound object that can hurt people and they just get in this mindset of it's me against the world. This is where the lower consciousness happens when you cut me off and I was the one who should have the free highway to myself because my destiny is more important than anyone's <laughs> or my destination, I mean, and my destiny, whatever. <laughs> so it's like, this is what the little face happens inside of us every time we don't get our way. But it's about going deeper and deeper and deeper and realizing, well, what are the addictions? May I have the next page, please? <clears throat> The addictions I've known from youth to adult have given some sense of worth, yet release them now all is more needed than known to continue this life here on earth. I know the guy who wrote this. It came from a poem I wrote a long time ago. It was called Woeful Child. And this is the embodiment of the entire poem. Because, and I've used this line many times in different talks and sharing in life with people that the addictions I've known from youth to adult that have given me my sense of worth. Well, I'm not talking about tobacco. I'm not talking about any drugs that you or I or any of us may have experimented with in the past. I'm not talking about sugar. I'm not talking about coffee. I'm not talking about any physical thing out there. Those are all symptomatics of the addiction I already had inside. There's something that created to deal with the addictions I have inside. I am talking about the ones that we have been programmed all the way through life, our power center addictions, the ones that bring us, keep us in our lower consciousness. The idea is to change these things into preferences and release the need to have it a certain way to fulfill my own security center freak out, that primal survival mode. So if Becky and I are in a conversation and the conversation doesn't go the way I want to, I'm going to start feeling an emotion inside if I get stuck in my lower consciousness. And I'm going to want to control this conversation to fit my emotional response so I don't freak out. And when we engage in conversations with each other like that, the egos, that part of the ego, 
are simply playing ping pong back and forth of control, manipulation, and power center responses. And it's like, one of the ways to stop this is to breathe and just breathe. We're always talking about looking in each other's eyes. That's another way to help this. Breathe, looking in someone's eyes, and then respond. These addictions become distractions to our own enlightenment. We rely on them to give us a false center of security and sensation. Through preferring, you can free your mind from the addictive patterns that you are enslaved to. And one of the examples that I've always used is, okay, I like a round tire. Mo most of us like our tires round. If when you're driving your car, you get a flat tire and you get all upset because you're flat, then you're addicted to having a round tire. If you prefer that things stay working and are round and have plenty of air and then all the parts of your car are oiled and lubricated and, and flow nicely, then when something breaks down, it doesn't change your whole world. It doesn't destroy every single thing that was going on in your day because of a flat tire. So sometimes we have to breathe into the fact that some of the addictions we have are the addictions to things going exactly the way we want to. If they stray any other way, we're going to freak out. My cat is doing this with me with the climbing on the table thing. And I'm like, ah! And sometimes I'm like, it's okay. And sometimes ah! I'm like, okay, Jasper, I eat here. I don't want to eat your hair or the little things of litter that might stuck between your toes. It happens. It's life. But... I watch the interaction because animals are going to be a real barometer of your higher consciousness and your lower consciousness because they don't have the intellect in the way with you to play that ego game we do. They're pure energy and they're reacting from pure energy and it's a good barometer again to let you know where you're at. And as I've done this little experiment with my cat and shifted into loving him unconditionally no matter what, praising him when he does it the way I, I'm wanting and if he doesn't to actually say I prefer if you walk around. Because as I shift the word preference in my life, just when I say, and we're supposed to put our wants out there to create our reality, but when I just simply say prefer, I'm like, damn, stuff fell off. Anxiety about it fell off. I may even have an anxiety about my wants, if they come or if they don't. But if I simply prefer something and shift to that, then I'm not going to have an emotional heyday if, I mean, no, mayday. Emotional heyday would be the other way around if, if it doesn't go my way. So it's about still breathing into the moment. It's always about breathing into the moment. I mean, I'm, I'm sharing a lot of my stuff with this guy's stuff, but I've been doing it the whole time anyway. Now I'm giving us clear things and myself to remind myself the how to discipline. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Hmm. And I've even done a talk on this one. Maybe this was simply a hidden message to help us discipline our thoughts and guide them to our higher consciousness. One of the things that will help is the 12 pathways. And if I may have the next. Nope, yep, back one. There we go. Another handout for everybody. This is the homework. Yes, this is an overview. I've got them broken down for when we're going to go through them. Here. Not the top one. You already gave that out. <sighs> so, these are the 12 pathways to higher consciousness planes of unconditional love and oneness. See, he, he groups it all there. It gives you the whole title in that line. Because his whole, his whole philosophy and his whole book is about the living love philosophy. But it's also about raising your awareness, raising your consciousness through these pathways. And again, words are words. Words have vibration. Words can heal us. Words can hurt us. You know, when we said something as little kids that's kind of untrue, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And that's not true because words can hurt, but, and, we have the tools to deal with that hurt so that we can rise above them so that they will no longer hurt us. But there is a time in our life when words can hurt. Well, words can also help. And one of the things that he suggests to do is to memorize these 12 pathways. The first three pathways are govern or covering freeing yourself. The second three pathways are covering being here now. The third set of pathways are interacting with others. And the fourth set of pathways are discovering my conscious awareness. And these simply progress. 
We're going to go to the very next slide and go into freeing myself. Now, back to Citizen Kane for a moment. So here's a man again, and, and I really invite people to watch it. It's an Orson Welles movie when he was skinny. <laughs> so it was a long time ago. And it was a, a, it was a profound movie for me because I watched it as a young man. And every once in a while, I, I look into it again, and I'm like, I've had aspirations to, for stuff, fame, fortune, stuff like that. A lot of us have. We've had hidden dreams, secretive thoughts about what we wanted to achieve in life. And then reality, and it's like, well, what is reality? And what reality do you want to focus on? And what does that serve me, in other words? Does having a goal like that serve me? Here's a guy that, again, had all the power in the world had money, had women, had things that people in his day and age thought was it. This was the, he achieved it. He, this guy's a guru. And some people thought he was a guru. They didn't use those words, but he was worshipped in the business world as being a, a business mogul. He knew everything. He was a very powerful man. But on the inside, he was torn up all the time. He was constantly going through anxiety, stress, freaked out, very neurotic. And all he wanted was that rosebud sled. He wanted to go back to a time when he felt free. And that is what these next pathways are about. The first pathway says, I am freeing myself from security sensation and power addictions that make me try to forcefully control situations in my life and thus destroy my serenity and keep me from loving myself and others. So let's just breathe into this very first pathway. This is what he's introducing, the 12 pathways, with freeing myself, all these security sensation and power addictions that I have. I might have a power addiction or security sensation for you to come to my house at a certain time, and if you don't, I'm going to be wigged out. Again, I can prefer that you came there on time. I can even talk to you and say I'd really prefer if you come on time. I still am allowed to share. And actually, later on in the pathways, you're going to see where it's imperative that you do. But this is about freeing yourself from the addictions for your security. Because we do make it up in our head. Somewhere along the line, we're like, well, Bob didn't show up at 10. I'm going to die. Mm, no. But when you follow it all the way down to all the different crazy things going on in your mind, you got plugged into a survival mode that if they didn't show up and respond to your emotions, could always be, uh then you're going to die. It's like, no, you're not. You need to get over it and through it and beyond it and raise your consciousness out of that lower consciousness fight or flight mechanism. Matter of fact, can I have one of those things back? I gave them to you all. Oh, the, the, the progress of the progression of consciousness. I've got that, the progression of consciousness one. This is where we're going back into this lower animal instinct, relatively fixed lifestyle based on instinct unlearned programmed behaviors. This is that reaction that's happening to us. <clears throat> we're trying to free ourselves from this so that we can race to the next one. As we go into pathway two, I am discovering how my consciousness dominating addictions create my illusory version of the changing world of people and situations around me. Every one of you is a professional at this one. We should all be paid. We should get good money. We should have stock. This program should be on the Dow. Because we are very good at making stuff up in our head and then reacting to it. And we didn't even have a conversation with them. I have done this, walking around my pool, having a conversation with somebody, getting all riled up and going, what are, what are you doing? <laughs> Who are you talking to? And why are they only talking crappy to you? Do they have anything nice to say? We get into the subconscious, not subconscious, lower conscious, and we keep making stuff up. And again, playfully, Armin and Angelina were saying, well, you're making that up. And I love that. I, want, I invite that in my life. Lovingly. Not, hey, you bonehead, you're not doing it right. That, does, that, that doesn't work. That's going to put the person in fight or flight again. But see how playful they were with it? When we're with each other and we realize that we're making something up, we have to breathe into this and allow the truth to come in. It's still about truth. It's still all the principles we know here. 
This isn't the Bible. And that's up for debate too. It's about the principles of truth that are within the words and to truly let yourself vibrate and get your consciousness to realize how many dominating addictions do I have that are creating a story that I'm making up in my life. Je understand that you're doing it so that you can be right. Our body wants to be right. And I'm saying, would you rather be right or happy? So as we go into the next one, here's a, this is a fun one. I love this pathway. I welcome the opportunity, even if painful, that my minute by minute, minute to minute experience offers me to become aware of the addictions I must reprogram to be liberated from my robot-like emotional patterns. <sighs> yes. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Life, for showing me every single thing that I need to grow. I can remember where I was on my drive when I said, Spirit, I want every single bubble of ego popped. And Spirit said, okay. <laughs> and that was my journey and that was my one thing. So Spirit keeps doing that for me. And this is how. This is one of the things that ex helps me accept those bubble poppings. Because these experiences or opportunities, even if painful, are showing me and making me aware of my addictions. My addictions weren't cigarettes or coffee or sugar or marijuana or anything I've ever tried in my life. My addictions were how I would react to people. My addictions were how I thought about myself all the time. You can have conscious thoughts about yourself all the time and be addicted to the chemical reaction it's making in your body. Good, bad, or indifferent. We get addicted to stuff that makes us feel like crap. Outside, but I'm talking about inside. All those other addictions, you still need to release them. You need to go to a place where you can find someone, a facilitator, a medical unit. Somebody can help you release your chemical addictions. But all these addictions, these security center addictions, these ones that are preventing me from experiencing what the truth of life is, man, do you know that we're living in, we're living in more of an illusion than we really think? Because we're making up half, 90% mm, of our lives in our head. I had to really, really, really stop and think about some of the things said to me in life last year. Meaning every single word that was spoken out loud to me, I, I, something shifted in me and I started hearing God. Sometimes I didn't like what God was saying. God, God is the universe. But it was me talking to me. It's always us talking to us saying, hey, listen, man. You're slipping back into your lower consciousness, Mark. You're in this fight or flight mechanism. Okay, stuff happened. but." It's about releasing these things that are making you addicted to keep producing chemicals in your body that you're now addicted to as well. Because, well, if you feel like crap all the time, it's all you know. If somebody suggests that you feel good, you might not even go there just because it's unknown. Start having this happen a little bit at a time by working these pathways. One of the things that he suggests is if you're going to have an, an addiction, while you're on your way to doing this, to be addicted to love. Be addicted to living love all the time. Be addicted to positive things for you. You still have to be aware if it's an addiction. When I first started working out in my early 20s and started really getting in shape, I ran 10 miles a day. I did like 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups. I was like, yeah. But if I didn't get to do them, I was all discombobulated. I started becoming addicted to sit-ups, addicted to push-ups, addicted to one, uh, the 10-mile the run. What I was getting addicted to was all the positive chemicals that got released in my body when I exercised. So some of it wasn't a physical addiction, it was a mental addiction because I knew how good I felt. And he's saying, yeah, go with those. Go with those. Now I still had to get to the point where I'd change a a, 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 an addiction to a preference. So if it was raining and I didn't get to run my 10 miles that day, I had to be okay. I had to be able to still be able to have an emotional day that was calm and I was not in control of but at choice with and reacting and responding in a higher conscious plane. I didn't even know what higher consciousness meant at the time. But we're always either in lower consciousness or higher consciousness. This sub-organism, animal consciousness, I say breathe into that one as much as you can and rec that's kind of what today's meditation was about too. It was about how many times are we just being triggered and that's why I brought up the traffic scenario because traffic is a good way to get triggered. So, if you're going to be addicted to something, go ahead and be addicted to love. May I have the next type, uh, page, please? Being here now. So, 
We have a Zen monk. Zen monks get around. A lot of stories about Zen monks. He's walking in the woods, just enjoying his day, and, uh, and suddenly two tigers show up, and he immediately bolts, starts running. The tigers are chasing him. He finds himself running towards the edge of a cliff, nowhere else to run with the tigers. He climbs over the cliff, it's hanging on a vine, he looks down, two tigers below him, too. Looks up, there's the two tigers behind him, looks down, two tigers below him. Hanging from the vine, <clears throat> a rat starts gnawing at the vine. And right there, growing out of the side of the cliff, was this beautiful, big, red, juicy strawberry. And he saw it. And he grabbed it. And he tasted it. And it was delicious. And he ate the strawberry. This is about being here now. This is about understanding that in every moment, we have the opportunity to appreciate and enjoy what life brought us in that moment. Even though that he knew in the past behind him were, was death, and right before him, his future was death. In the moment, he was able to appreciate the now. And that's what this section is about. Now, remember something, though. He still ran. He still engaged his survival mechanism. He still went to animal instinct and bolted whew, as soon as he saw that thing that could eat him. But he was able to do all that and remain in the now. So don't think that if I achieve my higher consciousness, I'm not going to jump out of the way if a train's coming at me. That mechanism will still work. We're living there most of the time. And that's what this being here now is about. The, first, the fourth pathway, but the first in this section, is I always remember that I have everything I need to enjoy my here and now. Unless I am letting my consciousness be dominated by demands and expectations based on the dead past or the imagined future. This is a big pathway. This is a big sentence. Because it, these, these are his words, the dead past, but think about that. It's perfectly said. Because the past is dead. There's nothing I can do with the moment, the moment ago. It's dead. It's done. The words that have already come out of my mouth have already come out of my mouth. Sometimes we choose and breathe before we speak because we know the words that come out of our mouth, once they're out, they're out. And it's all good. It's always as it should be. But this is about breathing into this moment and knowing that I have everything that I need in this moment to help me, to help me with my consciousness, to help me raise my consciousness, to help me let me know when my consciousness is being dominated by the demands and expectations of something that happened yesterday or something I'm fearing about tomorrow. The second pathway in this section is I take full responsibility here and now for everything I experience for it is my own programming that creates my actions and also influences the reactions of people around me. First lesson of Course in Miracle, nothing I see has any meaning. Second lesson, I give everything I see meaning. It's kind of, kind of it's like I'm choosing, I'm creating, I, I take full responsibility for every single thing going on in my experience, even with you. If Kim comes up and slaps me, I might not want to hang out with Kim because that hurt. If I love her unconditionally, I'm going to also understand that she came from a, a consciousness center where something didn't get met with her, so she got triggered. But I created it. It's still my face, my face that got slapped. So back to go inside to this one right here. I take full responsibility here and now for everything I experience. Now, a wise person in that may go, hmm, I created that from something going on. Life is trying to show me something. She's tripping right now. I might want to take a step back. That's just like running from the tigers. We're allowed to have that mechanism that says and, be, and is aware that the person in front of them is reacting from a subconscious, not subconscious, lower consciousness place and might smack me. So s stay like one inch past their arm's length and then he can still be with them. If they're really violent, Jesus did teach us lessons about these kind of things and that's what turn cheek meant. Or if you just don't know what to say in a moment, you can always turn, you're, you're allowed to turn back around, folks. Understand that when you do turn cheek on someone, sometimes it's for a second, a nanosecond for you to regroup. Because one of the things that he talks about later in the book and I'll cover is about reacting when we're in, in the heat of the emotions and to breathe into it. 
<clears throat> this is a very important one. This is probably one of, they're, they're all equally important, but I put a lot of weight on this one because taking ownership and taking responsibility, it's the whole premise of the workshop that Margie's doing this weekend, the one that Scott and I do. It's based off the three axioms by Aristotle. A thing is what it is. Own it, and then you can create with it. That's exactly what this is saying. I take full responsibility for everything that happens in my experience. We know that this is an illusion. We believe this in higher thought. We believe that we have more say in creating this reality. This is the how. But it's about raising our consciousness so that we can create what we're wanting instead of creating by default. And that's the biggest thing that happens. When we're in a group environment, big difference. Because now I have however many minds are in here at one given time creating something. So if I've got part of the group on a higher consciousness, part of the group on a lower consciousness, and part of the group on animal instinct only, are we going to get exactly what we want in our creation? We're going to get a distorted output, aren't we? Just like electricity and electronics. If the, if the conduit, there's something going on between the, between the source of the power and the machine, in that wire, you're going to get a distorted output. If one of the resistors breaks, it has a short or an open, it's not going to work right. When we're not, let me shift that, when we're thinking things and reacting in our emotional base, we're going to get a distorted output from the reality that we're wanting. We'll put out to the universe what we want because we think we put it out there, but everything else behind us is saying a different story and the universe is going, sure, sure you go, there you go, no, no judgment, no, no harm, no foul. You want Kim to slap you? There you go, brother. It's, it's, you want her to hug you? There you go. Sometimes we need to shift in here. I'm not going to go up to Kim and go, Slap me today. Hug me today. It's not going to work that way. It's going to happen in here. People treat me how I'm feeling inside. And that's all part of this. Moving on to the, to the next passage, pathway. I accept myself completely here and now, and then consciously experience everything I feel, think, say and do, including emotion-backed additions, as a necessary part of my growth into higher consciousness. This is a place to breathe, be gentle, and understand that if you're really wanting to take this journey, if you really want to explore your humanity to find your divinity, to be gentle with yourself as you're doing it, that I accept myself completely here and now, in the conscious experience of everything I feel, think, and say, including my emotion-backed addictions. Because this is the place that us, us good, good, obedient people want to flog ourselves. Because, well, golly, I just responded to an emotion-backed addiction. I obviously am not enlightened. I'm not achieving higher consciousness. I just should go back to the forest. Yeah, I've said this mo before about moments of wonder and moments of blunder. And every time we have an awareness, that is a moment of wonder. We would think, oh, look, I just caught myself in a motion-backed addiction. Motion of wonder, not blunder. The motion of blunder is when you went through your entire day and didn't notice one of them and crapped all over everybody, vomited on their shoes, created realities that this served you and everybody around you, because that's really what it is. We say the other things playfully, but it's creating a reality that disserves you and me, because in your reality, you want me to be happy too, unless you're just neurotic, have a serious neurosis, that would be more of a psychosis. If you wished ill on people on purpose, that would be reflective of deep, deep hurt. Most of us wish each other well. We do it all the time. How you doing? Well, have a great day. What if I don't want to? <laughs> what if I decided to have a crappy day because I've been responding to all my emotion back security centers and this is how I run my life? Who are you to tell me to go into higher consciousness? And there's another one. Who are we to tell anybody that they should raise their consciousness? I have no say in what you think, say, do, or feel. I have one say only, and it's how you treat me. The only thing I can tell you to do is to be nice to me. And if you don't, then I have a choice to walk away or to stay there and be abused and find out which one of my security centers I'm in. Find out which one of these places within me are taking full responsibility so that I'm 
have everything I experienced and to, un or, and to own it. The being here now part of this series is really important. All of it is. It's a culmination of it all. As we go into next week, and if actually may have that, next, there we go. We're going to be exploring the, continue exploring the 12 pathways. We're going to be talking more about interacting with others, discovering our conscious awareness, and we're going to be bringing into the seven centers of consciousness. This whole series, again, is about living love. It's the Living Love series, and the title is Handbook to Higher Consciousness. But I really want to iterate and remind us all that this is really the very first law, the very first page I had out there, which you don't have to bring back, was that the law of higher consciousness was to love everybody unconditionally, including yourself. What was that guy's name? Love thy neighbor as thyself. That wonderful man that walked this planet that a whole religion got made out of and you know, Course in Miracles also says things that God cannot change by what made men of him, man made of him, or neither can Jesus, or Buddha, or Krishna, or all the other people that tried to teach us different paths to higher consciousness and enlightenment. You know, I bring the parable of the sower all the time because it's one of the Jesus' most powerful lessons of consciousness, creating a reality, thoughts create absolutely. And a lot of the times as we're dealing with these lower pathways, I mean these lower consciousness, it's when our thoughts are getting sucked up or our seeds are getting sucked up by the thorns. And to just breathe into this, to know that there are pathways out here to help discipline our mind. Do you go and, does anybody go and exercise? You guys were just talking about walking. That's an exercise. We come here and we exercise our heart. We do, Margie's having a workshop right now. People are exercising their emotions. This is about exercising your mind with more than just math and science because there's a different aspect of your mind. I need my mind to do calculating and things like that. But it is also the thinker in me. It is the person that makes me make up stories. And I'm a really good writer. I love to make up stories. But I like stories with happy endings. And it seems like half my life I've made up stories in here that had really crappy endings or no ending at all. They're just purgatory stories where we would just loop the story of dismay over and over again. These pathways will all help us rise above that and rise into our higher consciousness. So I invite you to memorize these, to work these pathways, work them daily. Get up with yourself as a mantra, look yourself in the eye, talk to yourself, say hi, be kind, do all that wonderful stuff that you should be doing every day for you. I invite you to memorize these and ingrain them into you. Of all the things that we memorize, we have stupid commercial jingles of, of Cheerios box and Fruit Loops. Let's memorize stuff that serves us. It's like we used to always get threatened with less TV time for singing jingles because that meant we were spending too much time watching TV if we can memorize the commercials. So let's memorize something good because believe it or not, there's so many things in our mind that we have memorized by default and most of them are negative programming things. So I invite you this week to travel these pathways, focusing on the ones we just went through, be them, the be here now and the freeing myself, work them to this week, and then we'll discover next week with the continuing pathways and the seven centers of consciousness. So thank you, have a wonderful week, and Ahoma Tapayasa. The lights are on, but you're not home. Your mind is not your own. Your heart sweats, your body shakes. Another kiss is what it takes You can't sleep, you can't eat There's no doubt you're in deep Your throat is tight, you can't breathe Another kiss is all you need Oh, you would like to think that you're immune to this stuff Oh yeah 
It's closer to the truth that you just can't get enough You know you're gonna have to face it You're addicted to love You see the signs, but you can't read You're running at a different speed Your heart beats in double time Another kiss and you'll be mine A one-track mind You can't be saved Oblivion is all you crave If there's some left for you And you don't mind if you do You'd like to think that you're immune to the stuff Oh yeah And it's closer to the truth to say you can't get enough You know you're gonna have to face it You're addicted to love might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Lights are wrong, but you're not home. Your will is not your own. Your heart sweats, your teeth grind. Another kiss, and you'll be mine. Whoa, you like to think that you're immune to the stuff. Oh, yeah. It's closer to the truth that you just can't get enough You know you're gonna have to face it You're addicted to love Might as well face it You're addicted to love Might as well face it You're addicted to love Might as well face it You're addicted to love Might as well face it You're addicted to love Yeah, might as well face it You're addicted to love might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Might as well face it, you're addicted to love. Less <laughs> all.